Hey everybody, very gentle opening. Welcome back to the Binding of Isaac After Ruth Plus. We got the baby here, hello. Dare you give me another lost run? I am not afraid. Baby, let this be a lesson to you. If you dedicate yourself to anything, no matter how frivolous it is, um, you, you can achieve some kind of mastery or at the very least competence, okay? K1LF1KQE. Probably probably laying it on a little a little thick with the uh, with the quietness, but I, I have to level with you. Yesterday I, I was streaming, uh, and and Kate brought the baby in, and just like hung out behind me for a minute, being like, "Look, there's you, there's Daddy." I don't know why that's not what she sounds like, but hey, there's Daddy. Yeah, Daddy's at his office right now. And then I got hit by a monster, and I shouted, and I have never heard uh, my daughter so upset. I think that in in her baby mind, she thought maybe you know Daddy was getting destroyed or something like I, either that he was upset with her maybe or I that I was upset with her I guess or that uh, that maybe I was being hunted by like a predator or something like that and and she was very upset and and she remained upset pretty much the rest of the day honestly so <laughs> trying to I'm walking on eggshells ironically I suppose is this how I am the home right now? I'm walking on the eggshells of you, babe. I don't know the rest of the words. <laughs> I was thinking about that the other day, man. You know you know how screwed up it is? Okay, so hear, hear me out here. We were talking about Paul Rudd on the stream, right? Paul Rudd, if you're not familiar, um, is the actor who plays Ant-Man. But, but, you know, I'm not saying, that, you know, he didn't come up for that reason necessarily. He's, he's been an actor for a long time. He's in a lot of Judd Apatow movies like Knocked Up. 40-year-old virgin, etc., etc., but Ant-Man is probably how he's most well-known. Um, anyway, Paul Rudd is like 54, 55 years old, somewhere in there. Um, he's in his 50s at the very least. He looks amazing, for one. Not only does he look amazing, he actually, like, he, he looked good in, like, 2009, when he was in his 40s, but he was, you know, kind of playing, like, the, the love interest in a lot of those, like, Rashida Jones, uh, romantic comedies and stuff like that, but I saw a photo of him because I was on his Wikipedia page, cyber-stalking him. Um, and uh, in 2009 at the premiere of Role Models, don't get me wrong, he looks great for a 40-something, but, it, you know, he looks better now. How the heck does that happen? He looks... It, I know people are like, money. There's plenty of people money who age like milk, you know? <laughs> I know you're like human growth hormone and, you know, uh, from the Marvel uh, personal trainers. Okay, maybe there's an element. Uh, I'm trapped. Okay, sure. Yeah, you got me there. Maybe there's an element of something there. I honestly don't know the, the pharmaceuticals. Okay, uh, sure, you got me again. That, that would have been very annoying if we had died there. Um, but still, you know, again, like a lot of... People, you know, have, I, I guess the the real answer is like, you know, probably lifestyle plus genetics, right? You know, he's got good, good genes for aging, but it's, it's a real, like, it, it, I'm, I'm not complaining about my lot in life. I'm very happy with where I am in life, but just for perspective, you know, Paul Rudd, the, the first time I became familiar with him was Clueless. It was a movie that came out in 1994. I was five or six years old, depending on the month. <laughs> He was a... Oh, yeah, why not? He was a heartthrob in Clueless, okay? A movie that came out about two years after I started having actual memories. Um, so a long time ago. I went through all of childhood, adolescence, teenage years, adulthood, college, the first decade of adult life, etc., etc. I have passed through whatever, you know, meager heartthrob years I had. There was a brief window, maybe, somewhere between high school senior and university freshman when I still had my hair, I was in good shape, uh, and, and I carried myself well. That that time has long since passed. You know, the, the brightest stars uh, burn twice as quickly. <laughs> There's something, I don't know, whatever I could say to make myself feel better. Um, but that has happened, and it's been over for long enough that I've forgotten about it, and yet still... Paul Rudd is out here, like, breaking hearts. This, some some guys have all the luck, right? And the worst part is you can't even be mad at him, right? Like, he seems like a like a super genuine, nice, uh, kind man. I mean, I don't know him personally. I guess you should be wary of, like, the halo effect and stuff like that. But he's very personable during interviews, at the very least. It's crazy, man. 
Paul Rudd, he, I'm, okay, well, I mean, that's, I don't even want to say it, right, because he's such a nice guy, but I'm like, he's playing life on easy mode. <laughs> Imagine being handsome and well-liked for, like, you know, 55 years straight, for like a half century, man, that's, I mean, more, more power to him. I mean, I guess to some extent, you know, his, his own personal choices that have led him there. Anyway, I'm not actually, like, jealous, I'm more, like, uh, it, it is, it's noteworthy, right? It's crazy. Good for him, though. Good. He's a, he's a funny guy. I like him. Again, don't know him, but I, I think that we would be probably best friends. <laughs> if, if we knew, if, if he had time, because sometimes I can take a while to grow on a person. I think if maybe we had a couple of, like, I was thinking that first maybe we get introduced in, like, a group situation, perhaps, like, and then I could make a couple of quips that are really funny and, and then just, like, let other people carry the conversation. And then later, like, when he got home and he was talking to, you know, his wife, he might be like, you know, hey, that, that Ryan guy was really funny. And then she'd be like, hey, you should go, like, you know, what if you guys went and saw, like, a like a baseball game together or something? And then, like, from there, I, I picture, like, a lifelong sort of friendship, even, like, a mentorship. Or something along those. But it's just like spitballing. I haven't created this fantasy in my head or anything like that. Um, or, or, you know, such as. By the way, Baby's here. Hello, Baby. She's she's having a good morning. Again, it's, it's so nice. Like, I don't remember what it's like to wake up as a baby. But man, oh man. When you wake the baby up. Uh, like, on purpose. Not... And, and on purpose, benevolently, not just to be a jerk, like, Hey, baby, wake up! Which, by the way, you would never do, but, um... When you, uh, when you wake the baby up, and she starts kicking, and, and like, going, Ah! Ah! And, you know, she's just happy to see you. She, she's so happy to see you that, uh... You know, she there, there's nothing else going on in her in her mind. She's just like, this is amazing. I mean, I guess she did just sleep for 12 hours on the <laughs> average day. So what's she got to complain about? But I feel like if if like, you know, if I were sleeping or my wife was sleeping, and then me or her came in and like, you know, even if it was time to get up, if we like open the door and we're like, hey, sweetie. And, and not even just us, I think most reasonable adults will be like, yeah, what do you want? <laughs> you know, it's a, maybe it's an impolite way to respond to it, but it's also an impolite, you know, thing to do. Is an adult, you know, for the most part can manage their own sleep schedule. You're like, why are you waking me up? This is my day off or something, you know? I, get, I, got, I got a recharge. I know, I've, I've heard scientists say, or at least I've read articles that are purported to repeat what scientists have said. Um... And they say that sleep recovery, like, you can't, you can't store sleep and then, like, like, sleep debt is not real, apparently. Now, all due respect to the scientists, and, and I really do give them, you know, the benefit of the doubt, because they're actually working in the, you know, they're studying it. I'm just kind of like, I have opinions, but not enough passion to actually get into the industry. <laughs> Now, a lot of people think that enthusiasm is a uh, is an analog for for practice and uh, analysis, but that's not the case most of the time. You know, someone who, who's very passionate about something, but they're a beginner, they're still not gonna. That's not the kind of plumber you want. You know, you you might be better off with the guy who's been doing it for forty years and is a little jaded, but you know, he's got a lot of expertise and and on the job history. But, uh, I, I, my, my anecdotal experience feels to me like sleep debt is a thing. Like, the, the implication with sleep debt is that, like, oh, if you sleep for, like, four hours a night for two nights, you don't have to sleep longer on the third night to get back to baseline. If you just sleep for eight hours, you're gonna be okay. Yeah, no disrespect to the scientists, but I think I'm just, I'm just built different. That, that, that doesn't sound right to me. That doesn't sound... That does that doesn't vibe with my own personal experience. Hey baby. Hey baby. You know what? I'm going down to the next floor. Um I want to get an arcade. And for the first time in a long time, we actually got a very optimistic uh case for possibly becoming guppy here. How about that? The the reason that I don't feel that that's the case and again, you know, 
I, I do default to the scientist. I'm just presenting, let, let's call it the, the bear case for this, if you will. Um, is that, you know, there, there were a several month period right around the newborn phase where the baby's sleep is quite erratic. Now it's really good. I can't really complain too much, although it would still be nice to be able to, you know, have uh, some guaranteed days where you're like, you know what, baby, just I'm not touching you till noon. <laughs> you can handle your own basic needs until noon, right? I'm going to I'm going to go to sleep at 11 and I'm going to get out of bed when I feel appropriate instead of like to the sounds of uh, you know some fussing in the other room or whatever. Um but either way, you know, September, well the end of September to uh you know, really like November, December, slept terribly. And by terribly, I don't mean every night was horrible, but you know, erratic. Some nights were like fine, some nights were average, and then a lot of nights were like... It's really, it's it's less like the fact that the sleep was bad, and more that like when you went to sleep, you didn't know what was going to happen the next day, right? You're, it was less like, oh, I got four hours of sleep, and more like, oh, I went to bed at 11, and I woke up at 4, and then the next day you go to bed at 11, and you wake up at 6, the next day you go to bed at uh, 10.30, and you wake up at 2, you know, it's... Uh, it was the it was the uncertainty and the and the break in the routine, but I still don't I like I feel like that has caused like a permanent uh, arrear on my sleep balance sheet. Quite frankly, like I feel like for the rest of my life, I'm gonna need an extra twenty to thirty minutes a night just to feel normal because of what we what we leveraged in that period. <laughs> like even right now, like I, I got nothing to complain about. Usually the baby sleeps like eleven hours a night or something. She goes to bed at like seven thirty. And she wakes up at, uh, when it, well, basically whenever I choose to wake her up, which is usually around like 8. Um, I go to bed at around 10.30 or 11, and I, I wake up like, a, I like to eat breakfast, have a cup of coffee before the baby, you know, before it's time to do the baby duties. But even still, like, I'll, I'll get like, you know, eight, eight and a half hours of sleep a night, and I feel like I felt when I got six. I think it's going to take like a, a period to... To get it under control, I, and it's fine, you know, it's not that bad. Again, I kind of, I don't know, if anything, I think I, I kind of have like an oversleep bias. I have a tendency to sleep a little too much, but I think I'm actually like just a better human being when I sleep, let, let's call it like seven hours, seven to eight hours. Who would have thought that it turns out it's the exact amount that doctors recommend you get? <laughs> Bless you. She's stunned. She's like, how did how did he know? Well, it's because I looked at your your cute little face, sweetheart, and you were making uh you you look like you just were a cat that just smelled a lemon. I'm hoping she's gonna maintain a little more composure today. Again, it's not the baby's fault. Uh, you know, babies do what babies do. Um, but she was quite fussy yesterday. <clears throat> and I get, it's a baby episode, I, and I hope you enjoy it, because, like, I, I got no other anecdotes. I did go to the grocery store yesterday. I was getting to it. Um, I went to the grocery store yesterday. I, I know this is, like, backwards by a lot of people's uh, experience, but actually, now that the, uh, you know, we're, like, a year into the pandemic, I think we want this. We actually DoorDash, like... Way, I would say 2020, I don't know, 2020 is a bit of a blur, but so far in 2021, we have, like, ordered delivery slash takeout probably, like, 50% as often, maybe even, like, a third, oh my god, a third as often as we did in, like, 2019. I don't know, you know, just the lifestyle change, I, should, I suppose. It is a good thing, you know, to, because, I mean, ordering and delivery is expensive, you know, as compared to cooking the food yourself, obviously, but we've been cooking a lot more. Um, we've been using a lot of, like, you know, way more cooking oil, way more butter, stuff like that. Um, let me in. So I had to go to the grocery store, but uh, I, I took the baby. She was fussing real bad. This is my first, like, baby crying when I was when I was out in the, out in the real world incident. Hey, baby! She was crying, and I was like, you know, you get advice from people that's like, you know, when your baby's crying, uh, you know, sometimes just taking them out for a walk, giving them a little, like, motion is good. So I was like, hey, let's get two birds stoned at once. Let's, you know, go for a little walk with the baby, also go to the grocery store, and 
you know, pick up that stuff that I need to be able to cook tonight. Um, it did not work. By the way, a lot of people say you just take the baby out for a drive in the car. Forgive me, but I'd also like to, you know, have her have like a planet uh, with polar ice caps when she's a little older. So, so if she's like, you know, if in, you know, 20 years she's like, Dad, I still have trauma from that day that I was like crying and you wouldn't take me out for a drive. I'll be like, oh, well, why don't you enjoy the fact that, you know, the... the Global temperature has only risen three degrees since the day of your birth. Anyway, um, I kid, but there's some seriousness in there for sure. I don't want to, like, you know, burn a quarter tank of gas just having the baby fall asleep. <laughs> desperate times call for desperate measures, I suppose. Um, let, let's check out this curse room because I want to see if we can maybe become guppy, obviously. Um, and then, like, uh, you know, we're in the grocery store. She was fine in the grocery store, but then when we got in line... A baby in motion prefers to stay in motion. It's the first law of, of babynomics. Uh, she started to cry. And I gotta tell you, I thought I would be embarrassed. I did. I thought I would be embarrassed. Although, you know, what do you really have to be embarrassed about as a baby? Pretty much everybody that's, you know, understanding understands. There are some people who are like, ah, a baby shouldn't be allowed to leave the house, you know? But once you stop being 16 years old and you get a little older, uh... Don't they know the grocery store is a place for adults? <clears throat> that's that's my impression of me from about 2013. Hold on, Tomo would like to leave as well. If you'll just I don't blame him. He's trying to sleep in here. Then I'm I'm changing my voice and and my my timbre all the time. And then the baby's going ah ah ah. One moment here, please. One moment here. Hey baby. Hey baby. Hey Tomo. Hey baby. Hey baby. Hello. Hello. <clears throat> anyway, I thought I would be embarrassed. But I wasn't at all. Um, and in fact, I gotta be honest with you. Having a stroller in public is kind of like a politeness cheat code. Like, I have never seen... Like, I, I felt like I was finally being treated in public the way I want to be treated. <laughs> as, like, as stupid as that sounds, I was like, now people are finally, you know, they're, they're being uh, deferential. Not And again, I want to just be clear. It's not that I think I deserve special treatment when I'm outside. It's just that, you know, and, and y I think you tend to notice the impoliteness more than the politeness. But, like, if two people are walking towards me... On the sidewalk, I'll kind of like do a little sideways uh, rotation to allow them to get through. If if Kate and I are walking on the sidewalk, I would say like 75% of the time, the, the solo person does not make any move to get out of the way at all. They're just like, well, it's, you know, the sidewalks, I pay my taxes, the sidewalk's built for everybody. Why would I ever uh, even mildly, and I don't, the thing is, I don't even think it's about like, you know, inconveniencing themselves, because it's not really that I do it all the time, you know, it's not that inconvenient to kind of like slightly move yourself to the side so that, you know, you, you, everybody can make it to their destination unimpeded, but it's more like I, you want me to make a concession for you, even though it would cost me nothing, I dare not make a concession for you, because they, what, you think you're better than me? Like, people have kind of like a chip on their shoulder a little, I think, about that sort of stuff. Not not everybody, obviously, baby. Not everybody. Not everybody. Just daddy. <laughs> but uh, in the in the grocery store, you know, because you got the stroller and the baby's making some goo goo gaga noises. Um, you got uh, people are like getting out of your way. There, you know, when you're in the grocery store, so oftentimes people, you know, the, there's the the aisles are usually wide enough for two people to get through. Somebody will stand in the exact center of the aisle and then, like, look at their, you know, 17 different boxes of macaroni and cheese to figure out which one is the highest percentage of Asiago. If you are just a a single man in the... Oh, let's go. <laughs> it's been a while. If you are a single man in the grocery store... And it's not hard to... I'm not saying, like, oh, nobody appreciates the plight of the young man these days. But no one will ever move out of the way for you. It's just, e even if they deliberately put themselves, uh, you know, in a way that impedes your progress, they're gonna be like, yeah, well, get over it. You know, the world's kind of made for you. <laughs> and I'm like, be that as it may, man. I really need to get to those garbanzo beans. 
When you got a stroller, everything changes. It's like it's like being treated like, you know, royalty every time you're outside. It's like being one of those Minecraft YouTubers at PAX, man. People are like, oh my god, do you need to get here? And I'm like, no, but move anyway. <laughs> Unlimited power. It's, it's the infinity stroller is what it is. Even when I was in line, the baby started to cry. And uh, the woman in front of me was like, do you want to go ahead? And then I was, and, and I'll accept my, my uh, sainthood, or my, at least the Order of Canada, if possible. Um, you know, you can, you can just address it to the P.O. Box. Um, I said, no, that's fine. And she said, are you sure? And I said, yeah, that's okay. But I did it like, yeah, that's... I, 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 you can't really gesture that much because of the mask, you know? But I, I tried. I, I gave her, like, in my mind, I was channeling the energy of, like, I'm a good dad. This happens all the time. I understand. I went, no, it's fine. Don't worry about it. The baby cries, you know? It's all, it's all good. Then she probably went home and was like, I saw this deadbeat dad at the grocery store. <laughs> I offered him to skip my place in line, and he said, No! What do you think I am? Some kind of loot? You think you're better than me? Anyway, so I would really recommend it. Like, you could do like a, a, you know, Keanu Reeves and Speed sort of thing. You could just get a stroller and then fill it up with a bunch of old aluminum cans and push it around. Well, okay, maybe don't do that. But I'm telling you, if you, if you put like a, a doll or something in that stroller, people are going to treat you better. You'll notice. You'll notice. The only thing is, they might talk about you behind your back. I was at the grocery store, and this baby was crying so loud, I had to turn up the volume on my AirPods by one in order to keep listening to Jason Mraz. Right, baby? Right, baby? I didn't have my AirPods on. Mostly because I don't own AirPods, I own Enac Fire. <laughs> I was surprised how many people in the comments were like, I have the exact same earbuds. I guess we, we all went through the same, uh... I'm not worried about the boss rush there. We all went through the same buying philosophy. Amazon Bluetooth earbuds sort by price low to high. I may, I may cave. I may get some AirPods. I promise you that it's not for the flex. It's, it's... I mean, can I tell you something, honestly? I do... Here's my opinion on Apple, okay? I've never owned an iPhone. I've never really used a, a, a Mac. I mean, I used a Mac for a little bit when I was programming. And look, you, you, you could program on, you know, a Linux machine. You could program on Windows. I just happened to program on Mac because that was the laptop we had at the time. Um... And it, basically, I was like, oh, hey, Kate, can I borrow your laptop? I want to improve myself. Then she was like, sure. And I was like, how do you right-click? <laughs> what the heck is this weird clover button? I was I was useless, man. Hold on. Tomo would like to come back into the room, right, baby? You know Tomo. He's a silly billy. Yeah, he, he goes out. He's, he's like... Uh, you know, Tomo on, a, on the cat tree is like the song Close to the Edge by Yes. He gets up. He gets down. Right, there he goes. He, he just got up. So I'm not trying to make this like a... Oh, because I know people are going to be programming on a Mac. Ha ha ha! Programming on a Mac. Ha 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 ha! Bet you didn't even use Vim. Yeah, you're right. In my, you know, intro to software development class that exclusively used Java, we did not use Vim. If you really want to make fun of me, don't make fun of me for not using Vim. Make fun of me because the class used BlueJay! Which is not even really like an IDE. I don't even know how to describe it. It's like the difference between like UFC and like wrestling in those uh, sumo suits. But, uh, I, and, and I, I have used an iPad on occasion. Um, Kate uses her tablet, you know. I, I, tablets, I feel, have kind of like slightly gone out of fashion as smartphones have become uh, more and more popular. But, uh, you know, Kate uses the, the iPad now and then. And, uh, you know, I, I've used it from time to time. But I'm of the opinion Apple products are overpriced, for sure. And you, you pay a little bit for brand. But actually, like, like good quality. 
sincerely. And I, I say that as someone who is very much not like an Apple stan, you know? I, I use an Android phone. I don't really use a tablet. Um, I, and I, I, you know, I don't have an iPhone and never had an iPhone. But uh, even when I, you know, because the same kind of like Apple versus other companies debate has existed ever since, you know, I mean, probably since before I even have like conscious memory, but I wasn't really aware of like enterprise software uh, and operating system debates at the time. Um, but even back in like, uh, you know, when the iPod came out, MP3 players were like trash. And then the iPod came out and it was amazing. It was a great piece of technology, but I also cannot describe to you accurately, I think, how like, and I'm just gonna say, I know how it sounds, but how like sexy the first generation iPod with the click wheel was. It was a, like a form factor we people had never seen before. Admittedly, I was like 15, so you know I was more susceptible to that kind of marketing as well. Um, it was just like a, a piece of technology that when you saw someone have it, you were like, you know, I could have one of the, I would want one of those for myself. But fancying myself as more of a rational consumer, I you know researched like, you know, oh, what's the best MP3 player, uh, and I ended up buying like a Creative Zen jukebox, which was also totally great. I think it had more storage space at the time. Um, but uh, it was also, it was shaped like, you know, like two deck of car decks of cards glued together and it gave me a square bulge in my pocket that like ripped a hole in every pair of pants I ever wore and got really hot. And instead of a click wheel, you did all your navigation with like this weird little uh, knob on the side of it that you could click in and, you know, like it... It wasn't bad, don't get me wrong, but, you know, I, I can't help but feel that probably should have just gotten the... Yeah, sure, sock it to me. Probably should have just gotten the, the first generation iPod at that point, you know? Um, so I, I don't really... Uh, I'm, I'm not an Apple stan, and I understand that you, you do overpay for the quality of the product, but I do also think that the product usually ends up being pretty high quality. So that's, you know, hey, look, everybody I've ever talked to that has AirPods is like, I like them. That's, that's what I'll say. I've never encountered anybody that's like, oh yeah, I just bought them because they like look cool. And that's the way it goes though, right? It's like at first it's like, you know, somebody buying, you're like, if you pay this much money for headphones, you're like, oh, you've got a high opinion of yourself. And then all of a sudden it becomes the norm and you got to eat your words. <laughs> well, you don't have to, but it becomes more compelling to eat your words. Anyway. I don't know. Maybe I won't get the uh, airpods. It's not even on the... I, this is like what I'm like uh, all the time. Like in my head, I... I don't know, there's some sort of, like, almost consumer stoicism about it. Like, in my head, I imagine buying, like, a high-quality good. And I get, like, 20% of the value over just imagining. Like, oh, man, imagine how good those podcasts would sound on AirPods. And, like, the battery life is probably a little bit better than the Enac Fire. <laughs> just probably a little bit more reliable long-term as well. Um... Anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, and then, so after imagining it, I think I get some of the value, and then I just never purchase it. Which, I don't know, it seems like it, you're kind of winning in the end when you do that, right? Can I, and, and I don't, like, I don't want any money for this idea. I'm just throwing this out here, I think it would be very useful. What if you built uh, Bluetooth earbuds? Hear me out here. So they might have already done this, and if they've done this, I'm happy. Please tell me which brand has this available. Um... What if they made Bluetooth earbuds, and they had an em not an emergency battery, and I don't know if you can do this in a hardware sense, but what if, like, a certain proportion of the battery was stored for, like, you know, it only has, it's a 2% or something like that, and it has this one use, okay? What is the use? It connects to an app on your phone, which also known as Bluetooth. Bless you, baby, bless you. Um, and then... If you lose the earbuds, you can hit something on the app that is like ping my earbud and it'll do the same thing that like your phone does if you misplace it, you know? It'll boop boop boop. Boop 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 boop. 
Anyway, I'm just throwing that because I lose my earbuds all the time. You know what I do? We've got a bed that has like uh, slats under the mattress that are screwed into the bed frame, so I can't really take the slats away. I move the mat. Ow! I move the mattress out of the way, and then I put the flash on on my phone camera, and put like use my hand to stick it under the slats, and then take a photo with the flash on. Ninety nine percent of the time, the the earbud is down there. Anyway, for now, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future, and follow me on Twitch, twitchtv Lion. I am live every day, but Saturday. Love to see you there. And especially in March with Repentance coming out, we'll be streaming a lot of Isaac over there. For now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. See ya!